So I just about finished up setting up continuous integration on my side project, Saffron, and I kind of wanted to make a video going over the architecture of how I set this up. Because it was a little tricky because I have a mono repo set up and I need to deploy to the website, the app, and also the server. So to do this, I used CircleCI uh, as like the continuous integration server that I would push my code to, and then it would be deployed, tested, or well, it would be first tested, then built, then deployed, um, and then versioned uh, all packages or those three packages. And what my project structure kind of looks like is similar to the code ponder project I'm working on now where it is a mono repo with a packages folder and there are a website folder where my react code sits there's a server folder where my server is and that's going to be typescript and node code and then there's an app folder which is react native and then there's some other folders which are shared between those three packages now that's the structure of it the key to get this all to work well uh, that I figured out was to use and harness the power of Lerna. So this is something I see people asking me, why do I use Lerna? And this is a great example where it really shines and we'll talk about more where this fits in in a second. So I made a diagram of what it looks like uh, for the whole kind of process for this. So whenever I push my code up to GitHub, I basically want it to then have all this stuff happen and to trigger all this code. So my project is sitting on a private GitHub repo right now. And so when I push up my code, what happens is it fires off a circle CI build. Um, and then what happens in circle CI is uh, I need to first check and see which packages I changed. And this is kind of the big thing with the mono repo that could be difficult or that can be difficult is what happens if I only make a change in my website? I don't want to deploy the server and also deploy the app, for example. So to do that, that's where Lerna shines. So there's this function called changed. Um, and what change does is it literally just tells you what packages have a change, AKA you can use that to figure out which packages need to be deployed. Um, and so that's really where it comes in. So the first thing I do is run Lerna changed and I just see which of those three, because there's really these three, these three packages that need to change. And I also check like their dependencies. For example, if I'm using a common dependency on the server and the website, then I'll want to build and test both of them. So the gist of it is I use Lerna to check which packages are changed. And then when I figure out the website is changed and then I test and build it. Uh, and then after that, it gets deployed to Netlify. And then I'm currently just using the free Circle CI. Uh, program or uh, section uh, or I guess plan and so this basically is happening linearly uh, ideally this is probably should be could be concurrent but basically I test and build the website if there was changes and then it goes to Netlify then I test and build the server and then I actually SSH into my digital ocean droplet and I deploy it there um, and then well I don't SSH circle CI does um, and then lastly, I do the same thing on the app. Now there's not really a build step on the app, it's really just test it. Uh, and then I'm using Expo for the app. And so with Expo, you can just say Expo publish, and what happens is it publishes your new code to the Expo cloud. And so users are now gonna get the new version of the app on their phone uh, the next time they open up the app. And so that's kind of the, the how these things are getting deployed, is first check what's getting changed, and then I do the process for each one of those. And now here's the thing at the end to get this, the change to work, is I have to version each package. Um, and so there's a version command that I was using. Um, maybe it's published now. Maybe it's called published now instead of version. Maybe I'm using an older version of Learner right now. Um, but basically what it does is it uh, checks which cha check with like with your current commit check which packages are changed and then it'll increment the version and then at the end here so like for example also if the tests fail 
uh, I didn't want to create a new version of the package so I'm currently doing this version at the end um, and so this is something that I'm not entirely sure about because at first what would happen is uh, when I create a new version it automatically changes the change log and it'll update the version the package.json at least Lerna does that automatically for you so that's another place where it's super nice uh, and then it pushes the code up to github so what was happening at first is that would then trigger another circle ci build and it would just loop infinitely uh, doing this uh, until like well it wouldn't loop infinitely i realized after it doing it twice because it would get to the end here and see nothing has changed because we just released the new version uh, but what I added was I added a, a flag on the commit message when I release a new version to just skip this commit. So you can do uh, brackets CI skip uh, and then when I push this code to GitHub, well circle CI pushes this code to GitHub, it does not trigger another build on the CI. So, so basically what happens now is when I push my code, it's going to be checked to see what versions are changed, deploy those assuming the tests pass and then it's going to release a new version of the code and I'm going to know which versions are now in production um, that way as well so that's kind of how I am doing all that stuff and now that I think about it now um, I actually think I need to at least set the new version higher up maybe I set the version like here um, reason why I say that is or at least I think how I want to set it up. So like this is, I've been playing around with this setup a little bit. What I'm thinking about now is I think I actually want to test the website, test the server, test the app. And if all the tests pass, uh, then I want to release a new version. And that version I use when I deploy the server, website, and app. Because basically I want to know for each one of those services what version is in production right now. Um, and I use that. So I think actually releasing the version at the end is the wrong way to do it now that I'm looking at it. And I think really instead what I want to do is I want this to be like right here. Um, and I think I want like to first when CircleCI build stuff, it tests all the code. So I think I really want to do like a test all there um, and then build, 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 deploy. All right, let's, let's remake this real quick. Okay, actually I think I want it to work like this. So when I first push my code, it then tests it to make sure all the packages pass the uh, tests um, and then version it and then deploy it. Because I think that that way I get the newest, I get that version that gets created here in the package.json of all these files. It then uses that when I deploy it to each service. So I think that's the one change I need to make that way I'm doing it like this. Anyway, this is something that I am finishing up slash been working on and there's not a ton of great resources online that I found that talk about this so that's why I wanted to make this video of currently what I'm doing and how I have it set up but I'm very curious if any of you guys have a nice setup that you like and once I do finalize how this works in my application I do want to make some videos and actually show the implementation of how this the code for this looks like or I guess there's not as much code involved with it though there is a little bit but kind of how the circle CI config works and how it works with Lerna because Lerna is really the key to this. Uh, I really like having it to handle the versioning and also seeing what packages change since last release is pretty huge.